Hey, what's up? I wanted to share a few details about my 97 Toyota High Super Custom Van. I've had this for over two years now, and I've noticed like little things around it that are quite special. Um, because I'm getting older, uh, I tend to think about things and be more reflective nowadays. I used to be the wild child, the crazy one, and now I'm more sort of internal and quiet, and I think about things a lot more. Thinking about these things um, is quite interesting because you get a perspective of things like how things were designed, the thought process behind why something exists. And a lot of that uh, comes down to the things that I found in my van. Um, these are things that you don't normally find or see in cars anymore. And it shows you just how special this car was when they were thinking about designing it, when they were planning it, when they were going through the material selections. Um, and they really put a lot of effort into this, like more so than you would find in what car manufacturers are making today. Because today, car manufacturers hate making cars i'm sure we've all seen the land cruiser 300 series where toyota came out and said that you know engineering a split tailgate for the back like they've always done is too difficult and too expensive but yeah during this era they really went all out for example the door card this looks like just a normal sort of 90s door card from a toyota and uh after spending two years behind um the, the steering wheel of this car i've got pretty well acquainted with this and I've realized they've put in a lot of thought and a lot of effort into designing this thing. So on a modern car, usually you'll be faced with hard scratchy plastic up front here and basically all down the sides, um, unless you go for a really high spec model. Uh, but on this one, which is a high spec model, it's a little bit special. Up here you've got felt or velour, which is the same material that seats are made out of. So it's really sort of it's, it is felt. It's very soft. It's very gentle. Um, it's kind of like a little brush, a soft bristle brush on your skin. And that's where your arm sort of leans up against. Uh, and even up here, your arm sort of leans up against. And it's very nice to put your hand there. Uh, next up, up here, you would think that in the 90s, Toyota would have just gone with hard plastic for everything, um, like they did on a lot of the different models that they had. But up here, this is a soft touch material. Uh, because they know that chances are your hand might also be all the way up here. And that soft touch material carries on all the way down throughout where the speakers are and even into this sort of mat pocket area where you can put items uh, because your knees or your legs might rest up against it. And is it, it's quite forgiving if you press into it. It is quite a satisfying sort of tactical feel. But they did put hard scratchy plastic in one area and that's down here. You can hear the difference and that's because if you're getting into the van and it's in a tight parking space your feet tend to scratch up against this area here uh, and so they put that in here purposefully just so that it wears a lot better and as you can see uh, 25 years later it's wearing pretty well and just one last thing with the color schemes and uh, the door materials is just how well all of these things have worn because this is a different material to this this is obviously painted or coated or you know blended and manufactured in some way i'm not sure how it's made this is a different plastic to the one down there because this one isn't textured um, and this fabric is the same fabric that's on the seats but obviously this gets a lot more wear uh, because it's on the glass and the sun will hit it and yeah for all the different materials there is no color change it all looks rather similar which is how it should do you would think that after 25 years things would have worn differently there would be like fading in some areas um, especially up here but no everything's worn really well this sort of soft touch material hasn't dried out and cracked like a lot of cars a lot of euro cars tend to do that within like eight years uh, especially of this era but yeah this has uh, lasted pretty well so one thing I've noticed is interior colors. On most normal modern cars, you get the option of one or maybe two. Uh, and this, I notice that there's four different shades of color. Um, and it's quite purposeful. It's not that it's like faded or anything. So you can see the brown velour felt type uh, seats. That is sort of a light brown. And if you brush it in a certain way, it'll become darker and lighter, just like velour does. Um, then you've got the darker brown interior trim, which is like the dashboard, the steering wheel, things like that. Uh, then you have a lighter brown headliner, and the same goes for the sun visors. Uh, and then lastly, you have a cream color, which is on the plastic trim that goes up along the sides of the pillars. 
um, and where the seat belts are. So essentially, you get four different contrasting colors on the inside, and that really plays a lot as to how this car makes you feel on the inside. Took me quite a while to realize, um, and in fact, I've realized just the fifth one right now, which I completely ignored, which is black. Uh, so you can see that the trim around the center console, the cup holders, and all the switch gear and things like that is black. Same goes for the indicator stalks and things like that. So I'm presuming these are just off the shelf items uh, from Toyota. Um, but yeah, you've got light brown, dark brown, uh, tan, and then cream, and then black on the inside. And even the seat belts uh, are a darker brown, um, and they sit on the light tan sort of cream uh, pillar trim pieces, and they match the darker trim of the car, not the light brown seat. So a lot of thought went into designing just the color scheme of the High Super Custom. Very interesting. And... <laughs> I just thought of the sixth one, which is applicable to this car and this uh, Living Saloon EX model, which is the fake wood grain brown uh, dash trim, which runs obviously on the dash facer itself and then around the gear selector and things like that. So yeah, very interesting. Uh, five solid colors and then a different type of sort of trim material uh, creating the sixth. All right, next up we have three-tone paint. So you've seen this car a million times in all the videos that I made before. You've seen a million pictures of it because if you're watching this, you've Googled it, you like these cars, you know that they came in a few different colors. Two-tone, obviously, and then you got decals in the middle. There is three-tone paint schemes on most of these vans. So you've got the color on top, the color on the bottom, and then most of them have a singular third color that they all use generically. Come check this out. Black. You can even feel the difference in the paint line here and just how thick the paint is. So Toyota decided, again like the door card, again like the interior color options, they could have just painted this white and it would have been fine. If they were to build this today, I guarantee you two-tone would not be an option. The bottom would just be like some sort of vinyl detail or something. It costs a lot of money to do all of these little things. All of these cars have black here and black up here. So just on the nose, excuse all the bug splatter, the car was driven quite a bit last night, um, in the summer night, but yeah, black up here and then black between, follow me here, the glass panels at the back, and again here you've got the door panel itself which moves and then the back of the car panel which is black as well, really contrasts everything quite well. And when you factor in the pearl white paint on this one, which is the Living Saloon EX, it should have had its stickers up here saying Living Saloon, but that's been removed at some point. And then you've got the Oyster Pearl paint down here. It's called Oyster Pearl. Um, and then the decals, and then black trim, black door handles up here, and then follow me back around here. Black air intake vent. That really ties everything in together. I think, and even things like the black footstep here and black window surround trims, black tinted window on, you know, the pearl white over titanium with the nice decals and tiny little hints of chrome or polished silver, stainless steel, whatever you want to call it. So that is up here. These are factory rain gutter trim pieces. Um, bright work is what I assume the correct terminology for it would be. Tiny bit more back here. The bright work. Very subtle in how they put it in certain places. Just on the break of the tail lamps, uh, separating the turn signal from the rest of the tail lamps, but not across the center of the back. Around the number plates around. And then back down this side. Up on the roof again. And then the last area is up here. The last piece is here, the grill itself. So, slight splashings of chrome, um, and then the three-tone color scheme. 
really, really makes it pop. I think that has a lot to do with why this car stands out so much in, from the outside in public. Um, and the decals also help because the decals are textured. If I rub my hands over it, the certain different parts of it have little bumps and ridges to it. It's not just flat. The last bit of detail on the High Super Custom is the badges. Toyota badge, they've had this badge for quite a while. Um, anyone that looks at this knows it's a Toyota. Uh, the same goes for the back. So that's one Toyota badge, the Toyota logo badge. If you follow me to the back. One more Toyota badge on the tailgate. But if you notice, it doesn't say Toyota anywhere. Normally, uh, on pretty much every other car, it'll say Toyota up here, or Nissan, or Mitsubishi, or whatever. But on this one, you just have the Toyota badge, high ace, three liter EFI uh, diesel, or turbo. This one's faded, so I don't know what it says. Full time full drive, this is an aftermarket sticker, the factory one sits here, and it's white. Down the side, you have um, full time full drive here, which is the original sticker. But that's it for badging, basically. There is something interesting on the Super Custom badge itself, which is incredibly detailed. It looks like um, jewelry up close, and I'll put in some B-roll footage now. I just noticed this the other day, just how much detail went into the Super Custom badge itself here. Uh, this one is specific to the Super Custom G, which this model is. The Limited will have a different badge. I think the earlier or the lesser grade models will just have Super Custom written there. Um, but yeah, I'll get some closer shots of this so you can see that the Super Custom is almost like platinum or silver. It's slightly raised and then the G uh, is very intricate. It looks like 24 karat gold. But yeah, no Toyota badges on this thing whatsoever except for one place. Look down here. If you go down below where the tires are, you will see that the only place that it says Toyota is on the rear mud flaps. That's it. That is the only place that this car says Toyota on it, on the outside. Toyota was so confident in producing this car, they were so proud of this car that they wanted everyone to know instinctively that they had produced the Toyota. All right, so that's it for me. Those are just a few details that I've picked up on the Hire Super Custom that I have. I feel it makes it very special, and it's nice knowing just how much thought and effort went into producing this car. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.